Hey everybody, this is Andy with RSX, and today uh, I have a special guest, uh, Dave Sharp from Forge Line Wheels up in Ohio. So um, Dave, thanks for taking the time to spend uh, with me today and kind of going through. Sure. Thanks for coming to see us. Yeah, Forge Line Wheels. So really, um, I've been doing a series of interviews with some folks over the past few weeks, and a lot of it is about storytelling and people just telling their story of so like forge line wheels you guys have been in business for a while but you know like how did dave get started with forge line wheels and just talk to us about how it came to be yeah it was 25 years ago actually 25, well, 25 and a half 25 uh, last year was our 25th anniversary uh awesome. and and my brother actually started the company believe it or not steve um who's a sales manager today I owned a company called Wheel Source, and we are a distributor with multiple locations across the country uh, for BBS, uh, Momo. We are the largest Momo distributor really? in the country for a couple of years, and brands like that. And we distributed to uh, retail stores and tutor shops and all that type of stuff. Um, but there was this void of a race, like a custom-made uh, offset and width specific particular for racing i mean there was you know bbs did it but they generally didn't want to deal with the public if you weren't a race team oh, they, they really didn't want to talk to you it, much or it was very it. difficult to get product from them um, hre was just kind of getting into it but not really um everything else was a cast wheel in a box that you had to run spacers and everybody just ran you know bought whatever they could get and ran spacers right. and stuff like that so we started forge line steve started forge line uh and then wheel source distributed it in the beginning there um, and it was a two-piece wheel welded. So we had a forge, we had a center that was forged to shape. Yep. And we actually welded it inside the barrel wherever they needed it. And bought, bought the barrels from California. Much simpler product than we have now, but it worked fantastic. I mean, it was it was a huge hit right off the bat. It gave some customization, right? It gave some flexibility. Right. Yeah, you wouldn't have to run spacers. Yeah, and fine. so, yeah, so especially uh, race teams like World Challenge and IMSA and that kind of stuff, you know, grabbed onto us right away uh, because we could make them whatever offset they needed and some widths that they couldn't get before. And uh, and they were lightweight, four centers and, and spun barrels. So the wheels were all light as well. And that's one of the things when I think of Forge Line, I, I think of that kind of race history and race team focus. You know, there's a lot of wheel manufacturer right? you can get lost. Right. If you go Google, you know, wheels for your cars, which right. is plethora, and a lot of it is about design and aesthetics and styles, right? Cars and coffee. Right. But you all were like, the racing side was a real big part, at least my understanding. It always has, and I, I think that's what sets us apart a little bit. I mean, that's always been our goal. It's always been our passion. Um, immediately, people that saw the wheels on the race cars wanted them on the street cars. So, of course, we had to make, we had to fabricate a cap and make a cap work and <laughs> all that type of stuff. And so, uh, it, it's just transpired in, in where we are today. We thought that our, we would eventually sell more street wheels, like the street wheel business would just take over because there's so many more street right. vehicles out sure. there. But the motorsport community continues to grow and grow and grow and motorsport wheels are still 50% of our business. 50%. Yeah. And yeah. so you were talking about Enza World, you know, the, the challenge. Right. So what are some of the teams or the, the series that you're providing wheels to? Uh, we were, we have, homologation has kind of changed that. Okay. So about three years ago, we were, we, we had every GTD Enza Porsche team except for one uh, three years ago. And uh, we dominated the whole entire GTD scene. Um, but three years ago, they went to homologation, meaning you have to run the car, the wheels that the cars came with from the back. You can't change anything. You can't change springs, you can't change right. brakes, you can't change, you can't change anything. It's just crazy. Um, so we got kind of ruled out of all that stuff. Uh, the only GT3 car that we're left on at the moment is the Glickenhaus car over in okay. Europe. Okay. Um, and they're starting to build customer cars now, so we'll start seeing more of those cars. So that's kind of cool. All right. Um, GT4 wise, were the factory wheel on the Mustang GT350 and the Camaro, and we were the Panos, but I think Panos since it's done Don's died, they're probably not going to resurrect that. Worker. Nice. And and so has this been home for most of those 25 years? Yeah, it was actually next door in a much smaller place, but yeah, this general area, yeah, it's been here. This is is where you where you've been. Mm -hmm. So your brother gets it going, and you know we're 25 years into it. You know, I, I can hear and see the shop off to the side over right. here. How many folks now today are uh, involved? We have 20, 20 employees now. 28 yeah. employees um, here. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I always find it neat. I can hear the some of the, I guess, milling machines. You hear some of the machines right. in the background there. So 
when, when I think of wheels, and if you, I'm not an expert, okay, so I'm going to give you, you know, based you know, on a, a novice here, right. but, I, you know, there's what I call, like, a, what I understand is, like, a forged monoblock, then there's, like, a, a two-piece, and then a three-piece wheel. Those are the things that come to mind for me. So when someone's looking at wheels and they they see all these different types, right. you know, the, the single piece forged, two and three, what are some of the things they should think about to say, this is might be when a forged would work, here's maybe some reasons you do a two or a three piece wheel. Yeah, the, the forged monoblock, because of the multiple pieces that go together, the forged monoblock is always gonna be, so let's say you take the same design in, in all of those okay. in, in a monoblock. The monoblock wheel is gonna be stiffer and it's gonna be lighter. Less pieces, you know, it's not pulling together. So that's why five, six, seven years ago, you saw all the teams as the cars are getting more uh, elaborate and the wings and the arrows getting bigger and the cars are getting heavier. They just, they figured out that a stiffer wheel is actually better than a lighter wheel. So the the, the the combination of stiffness and lightness is, is better than just having a super light wheel. Okay. Um, so the monobox is always going to be stiffer and it's always going to be lighter, both in that same design. Okay. Um, so if you're looking for the ultimate wheel to put on the car in, in, and you're looking at multiple designs or whatever, the, 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 the monobox is going to be the best choice. Um, the three-piece wheel enables you to fix it. it, it you know, if we used to have two people that went to every race. And we replace room house the, the whole entire weekend, all the time. You're just repairing wheels and all that kind of stuff, which is nice on the three piece wheel, but on a model block, you can't. You, 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 right. you can once it, it to a certain once point. it's done, it's done. It's done. So now, you know, they just stock extra wheels and pull them out of the box. Right. Right. The car. Right. 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 But to the to the average, you know, the person who's just on their street car, the, those multi piece wheels allow you, if something gets damaged, to change a piece that, out. That's one advantage. It also gives you a lot more flexibility. We can get to offsets and widths and stuff. Anything. We can build you basically anything you want, no matter what how negative the offset is or whatever. On a monoblock, we're limited to what the 40 is going to give us. Oh, which okay. is typically we can get like a zero offset or an 18 offset. On, on certain ways where a three piece wheel we can make negative 52. I mean, so if you want one of those, I call them the real deep dish or you know, right, deep right, land. which is why we do so well in the, what they call the pro touring market, which is the 69 Camaros and Mustangs, right. all those, all those builds. The, the three, that's, that's why you see three piece wheels, three piece cars. wheels. Okay. These, these make sense, right? Right, right. yeah, and, and they're a lot more customizable as well. I mean, a monoblock wheel you can make it red or blue or brushed or. Well, yeah, the other ones you got three brush, you, you can, yeah, yeah, you can paint inner or outer, or you can have the inner and outer can do two colors, the center, barrels, the, you know, bolts, all oh. that type of stuff. So a lot of people like three piece wheels just because they, they're more flashy. Yeah, if I'm not worried about the weight or the right. strength or whatever is going to In general, they're not, they're not that much heavier, but because of the bolts and the rim register, yeah. so if you're just going to have more weight. Yeah. Now, um, so. The designing of the wheels, um, do you have like a design? you guys like play around with all those different? Yeah, yeah. It's a full, it's a full time job. We're constantly thinking about new designs and constantly throwing back, you know, the salesmen are throwing stuff at us, customers are throwing stuff at us, and Todd and I, the engineer, pretty much come up with, with the, just going back and forth on what's gonna work and run an FEA on designs to make sure they, they do work right a lot of the manufacturers out there put out a lot of really stylized wheels or real thin skinny spokes and real aggressive looking things and if you look at our wheels most of our product doesn't look like that and there's there's a reason for that because most people are buying our product for performance reasons a lot of people take them on the track so we're not willing to put a wheel out there that's not going to hold up there. yeah i mean your your history and your focus especially like when you said racing and you know my friend alan was always sharing me about that history of racing and right. the teams and the strength of the wheel, et cetera. And sure, there's different applications. Maybe there's wheel manufacturers out there that if you're looking for that showy, glitzy, 18-spoke right. wheel right. or whatever. That's, that's, what, that's what they do, and that's not, yeah. you know, that's not what we do. We, right. We've had some more elaborate, we've had a lot more elaborate designs in the last couple of years. I keep looking at this red one behind yeah, right. That, that, that's one of them. That, that, that one looks like that. that's, okay. I mean, that's, that's like something that we would have made a couple of years ago, but right. we're, we're branching out. But that's wheel's still very, very strong, very durable. Yeah, no, it looks, it looks great. And, I, and the one above, with the carbon lip on it, right. um, I think, is there, are those ones Alan has? Alan, Alan, Alan has those ones. Yeah, no, his yeah. car, yeah, they, those look uh, those look sharp. And is that is that a multi-piece wheel then with so the barrel? A, so that's a two-piece wheel. It right. is a two-piece. Yeah, so it's it's a single barrel and then we're holding the, the center into the barrel. Cool. 
Um, so, so when you're coming up with new products, um, like you said, they're designing all the time. Do you do you do anything specific to like say a new car? Like you know, Porsche's released. I'm a Porsche nut, right? So Porsche's released the 992, and right. soon the 992 GT3 will come out, right? right? And yeah. and it's like obviously Porsche always tries to change up their wheels or do something a little different. Do you guys, when a new model comes out, like the new Corvette or something, and go, hmm, I wonder what we can do with that? Absolutely, we're we're on that as fast as the C8 has been just just been phenomenal for us. You know, Chev Chevrolet couldn't have put a worse wheel package on that car <laughs> so, so, so the so options you had as soon as we saw that so that was car, good for you oh it was great for us yeah. so yeah we actually i actually flew out to las vegas before the cars were even out to a secret location i can't i can't say right and measured up cars to so we could have wheels available when the cars came out which was fantastic so, um now porsches and 992 gt3s and stuff like that that can be a little bit more difficult it's very difficult for us in dayton ohio sometimes to find a car like that yeah. you know some of the other manufacturers out in california and miami they have a much bigger advantage because cars are available usually sooner there and there's more of them got it but you know we really can't get, we can't move forward on something like that to you get a car you have to get the because you got to play around with offsets and the mountain yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah brake calipers hub hub diameter all that stuff right yeah so it's yeah there's some thought that's um that's definitely uh, unless you can verify that it's a lot of times sometimes we can verify well it's the same brake as this model or the same this model and so then we don't have to do measurements but you know the gt3 and even the new turbo i'm sure we're gonna have to yeah because the porsche has you know with with the iron versus the ceramic and the different size rotors all, and the calipers are huge totally and you know right. clearance right. and all of that so when it comes to um material are they all the same are they different are they different based on like say the teams have specs or do you guys say this yeah, is now we, we, we use... oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we know he's a metallurgical you know guru yeah so well, most people think that 6061 t6 it's all it's all the same um and it does have the same basic properties which you can change those the, the elements the, the nickel and the boron and the copper you know, the really, really small amounts of the other metals in there, you can change that configuration to make it particularly stiffer or stronger. Okay. Um, our our forgings that we get from California is a proprietary mix of that stuff that makes it 20% stronger than typical 6611. Yeah, because I imagine, especially in racing, especially on some of these endurance races, where they're just pounding the heck out of those wheels, you know, running you up over curves and, and running, running through. Right. And it's, more, it's really more the side loads of those cars. Is it the side Yeah, the arrow. Those cars have so much grip. It's absolutely amazing. They just tear up wheels. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So on a on a mono block wheel, do, do you, is it like just a, a big ingot or something that comes in? Like, where do you start? Like, you know, what does that look like when you're... Yeah, oh, maybe when we're finished this, I, I, I can actually bring you in the 40 okay. So it's a hundred, it kind of looks like a stone age, so it's something you see. <laughs> it's the shape, basic kind of shape of a wheel, right? but it's but it's forged in that, so it's about 110 pounds. Really? Right. And so we're milling that down to 18 pounds in some cases. <laughs> so a lot, a lot of machining. But they, they forge the initial, the top part of the, of the wheel, and then they leave a bunch of material on the back. And then they actually take rollers and, and spin out the backside of the wheel. Okay. Um, but it's still relatively thick back there. We, we still machine all of that. Yeah. But, so it's a basic shape of a wheel. But, but So that process, it takes a little bit of time then, right? To, yes. to, yeah. to do a wheel or do a set of wheels. Absolutely. It's a lot of machine. Right? Two, two lathe processes and a, and a mill process. Anywhere from four hours of machining to wheel to eight to nine to ten hours. For a wheel. Yeah, we make the wheels for the Ford GT Mark II. Um, oh, yeah. I'm not yeah. if you're familiar with that car. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, that is a heavy, extensive, you know, eight to nine hour per wheel machine. So if someone is interested and they're like, wow, I, I, you know, I was on your site looking at your products and say, here's a, a wheel, you know, I, I really like, what is, what's the lead time on something like that? Or what, you know, what do you, what do you usually tell folks? You know? Well, generally, it's always been about three to four weeks. Okay. Um, but since COVID started, I wouldn't say this has started, but since basically the first six week shutdown, um, we have been busier than we've really ever been in the history of the company. Isn't that <laughs> crazy? I mean, I, yeah, I was, I, who the heck was I talking? I was talking to somebody else the other day, and 
they, they had said something similar. And I was like, you know, you read all the stuff on the news, you hear stuff on the yeah. news, and then you hear folks, and you're like, man, we're busy as like, it's just been crazy. Yeah, the automotive aftermarket in general seems to be very, very busy. So we're, we're running about eight weeks now. <laughs> wow. So we're trying to hire people and, and, and go to a split second shift and stuff like that to try and Good for you. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I guess that's a good thing. Yeah, good, I mean, good, good, good problem to have. Right? Yeah, good I guess people are like, well, some of our customers aren't happy about it, but, but that's the way it is. Yeah, it's eight wow. weeks. But, you know, maybe the guy said, hey, honey, uh, we're not going on a vacation. <laughs> How about I get a new well, set of wheels? That's exactly what's happening. Yeah. A lot of people are stuck at home. They're not spending the money on vacations. They're not going out to dinner. They're not doing anything. Right. And they're just delivering them on our cars. Right. Yeah, because I saw... You know, the one place you can go to, you can go to the racetrack. That's right. Almost yeah. every racetrack across the country is over. Yeah. I um, I uh, do DEs and I instruct with the uh, Porsche Club where I'm at. And yeah. th- when they opened up, they just went to like advanced only. So because, you know, the in car instruction. There is a lot of in car instruction. Yeah. Some are yeah. doing lead follow. They're trying to do a little bit Correct. of lead follow. We're going follow. to Mid Ohio School this weekend, BMW, and doing, and doing some lead follow. Doing, oh, God. I love Mid Ohio. That's yeah. like one of my favorite that's tracks. Right. That's our home track. Yeah. yeah. That's like, uh, I love that track. I, I I haven't been now. It's probably been a year, year and a half. But oh god, every time I can get there, I live down outside of Louisville, so Putnam Park over in Indy is you know, a great small track. park. It's yeah. a fun little track. It's pretty safe. It's very safe. Track. I you know spent a lot of time there. You know Barber. I think one time was you know I got on. I called the Big Boy Track was up at uh, Watkins Glen, and, and that was like yeah, that was a lot of fun. Fantastic track. That's a lot of fun. It's all in your favor. You know all the camber and stuff's in your favor. Yeah, right. So it's right. like. Other than tabletop, most of it is like you know not too bad. And then Barber's a nice uh, um, uh, technical track too. Beautiful place. I like Barber yeah. as, a, yeah. as a technical track. So we we said lead times maybe eight weeks now, just based right. on what's going on. And everything, as I understand it, everything's made to order, right? You don't made to order. We don't stock anything. We don't stock anything. Now we're changing. We're changing that. We're we're actually for and we. It's a, this is a new product for us. Um, we're we're getting into the flow forward wheel business, which is basically a wheel in a box that's our, that's already it's already you know, we make them in silver, uh, silver, black, chrome, and anthracite. And we, currently, we're making them for Porsche 991s. Okay, it's five lug only. But we'll eventually get to other right. cars. Um, and these are these are street wheels only. Uh, and now, amazing. do you do those here? Is that third party? That's or? third party. So okay. there's no, th- th- there's, uh, th- there's actually no wheel manufacturer in this country that can even do so. Well. It's it's right. every, all of it's been shipped, sh- shipped across. The now, does um, is is flow form the manufacturing no, process? It's, 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 yeah, it's a manufacturing process. So it's still so they cast kind of like they do the forcing. So they're, okay. they're for they're casting the face of the wheel. But the design and everything as well, it's not machine. And then they're flow forming, they're spinning out the barrel. And so the barrel has characteristics of a forged wheel. So the yeah. barrel's real thin. Yeah. Like on a cast wheel, the barrel's real thick. That's where a lot of the weight is. So since that barrel is thin like a forged wheel, it eliminates a lot of the weight of the wheel. Okay. So it still has a cast face. So so they're 100% not track wheels. I mean, we're not selling those track wheels, but not everybody needs you know, a forged wheel or, or, or right. you know, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, so we think it's a good design. We're starting with one design with a particular 991s, Mustangs, Camaros, Corvettes, uh, you know, a couple of applications in three different colors. We'll also have a custom program, but we'll be rolling it out for all kinds of other colors. And it's probably for folks, I, I would imagine, maybe a little more economical too. It's it's considerably big. economical. Yeah. It's less than half the price of the forged wheel. Um, so if they're looking for something, hey, this has some nice aesthetics, I like the way it looks. Right. I, I and it has 100% designed and engineered by us it's, it's it's our wheel somebody else just made it. oh okay yeah, so you're exactly. not just saying oh joke makes you know these t-shirts and i'm just right. buying those 100 designed, designed tested, by EA. Every, everything was done by us and we, we just had to have somebody else yeah. To make it we, yeah we, yeah because the bottom you know, and boundary. then like you said you could have that where it's a quote in stock wheel then right you know, correct that as well right if somebody doesn't want to wait eight weeks and they right. don't necessarily need a horse wheel then this is a good, a good product for that yeah so these wheels, like, you know, I keep looking at this red one behind you. So, like, if you wanted that in a different color, you could do, like, a host of colors. Yeah, or... we specialize in that. And that's what makes that's what makes these wheels also so expensive is because we're doing four at a time. And you can basically right. spec them any way you want. Just yeah. what do you want on your car, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. God. So, guys, if, if, if you... If, you go out and check out, is it Forgeline.com? Forgeline.com. Forgeline.com. Go out and check it out. Look at all the options. They have galleries out there, and I'm sure you can get lost just looking at all the different options there. 
and then uh, hit these guys up if uh, you see something you like. Sure, absolutely. You know, and then like, yeah. And I'm sure you could talk to folks on your team, you know, hey, here's what I got, here's my application or what I'm looking for. Absolutely. And you probably ask and, yeah, in most cases, we're gonna know your application if you haven't done stuff with the car. But you know, if you've, a lot of what we do is they put fender flares on the car. I mean, the car's totally custom and, and, and you may not even know what fits the car or how to, how to do it. We can walk you through, we have a template on our website that, that's gonna list out all the measurements that we want you to take. So you can fit a, a custom set of wheels on your car that you put fender flares on or whatever it is. That's we specialize in that. Yeah, because I, um, Alan can tell you about this. I, I uh, went out and uh, on my daily driver, and I said, "Well, let me get another set of wheels. I wanted something a little bit wider so I get more rubber down on the road. Yeah. They, they fit the car, you know, because they were for that particular car. But anyway, we got those wheels, and I ended up with." Uh, a whole bunch of um, wheel well rubbing, yeah. like you know, yeah. the fender, like especially when you uh, the compression, compress, it was like, kring, kring. and uh, Alan went with me. We drove down the road, and with each of these compressions, this thing is shaving a piece of the tire off of every time. Right? Of every time, so eventually, I end up with this these little flaps, you know, of, of yeah, yeah, rubber no, things really coming through. So we stopped somewhere, and Alan's like, "Man, he's like, you know, we got we got it. This isn't going to work." So. Alan says, you know, he goes, when I used to do this at the track, I would just get like a, a bar or a baseball, baseball bat, bat yeah. cut it and go up in there and roll and roll the um, and roll the fender. And um, I won't take all the time here. We can tell you the story <laughs> later. But it was hilarious what we went through by buying a baseball bat at a Dick's, going across the street to the Home Depot with a bat and then asking the guy, hey, can you whack this down for us? Um, just so we could drive the darn car. Sure, Cause sure. I was like, this isn't gonna work. So the good news now is I shaved enough of that tire down that, um, so they're lighter now. But anyway, I, I understand the importance of, you know, getting the right yeah, wheels right. And, and the offset and everything for your car. Sure. You can still get that look if you want that wider, look etc but you just got to get you know just yeah we can give you recommendations of whether we think you know we sell we'll people spec out wheels and we'll say hey i don't think that's going to work and they and they'll say that's what i want and, then, and that, 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 so that's what they get <laughs> but, but you know and some people do like they they're rolling their fenders they're doing something yeah, with the car yeah. to make it because they, they 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 really like that flush look that, that's yeah, fine right yeah. that particular look yeah. and you know you're like okay i, I told you yeah. we'll make the wheels for you we'll sell them to you but just understand when you get them yeah. you know i get the phone call that says man would you sell me you know yeah. it's like these wheels like don't work it's like well hey you know it's uh i'm looking at your uh GT there. That's the GT for you. Mark II. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I mean, yes. uh, you know, yeah, yeah. Race teams manage that. Ford, GM, um, Hennessy, uh, Petty, Hendrick Motorsports, uh, you know, all, all, all kinds of sailing, you know, just about anybody you can think of, we've done some sort of project for. Uh, we do a lot of project deals for, we're working with several electric car companies, I can't, I can't say. Right. right. Um, we're also working for a giant, um, uh, amusement amusement park company, <laughs> you know, building. So we do all kinds of. Uh, we do test wheels for Hoosier, like uh, Hoosier Hoosier needs wheels to. They do a bunch of tire testing and rotations right. and stuff like that. So we make test wheels for them. Uh, we make a lot of test wheels for Ford. Um, well, like the GT three hundred and fifty R when they're proving that car out, they have like four hundred mule cars that they drive all over the country and, and warm weather testing and cold weather testing and stuff like that. And so we'll we'll make the wheels for all those cars. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 that sounds really neat. I mean, it's this, this it's very we, we get yeah. all kinds of interesting, yeah. interesting projects like that all the time. But hey, Dave, um, thank you for your time. Uh,